there's a possibility that all of them will be recoverable. And so this time where they spend in the doers will be more an interruption of life, not a cessation of life. One person who bought into the dream is entrepreneur Terry Katz. He signed up for a full body preservation in 2000. Eventually, man is going to try to figure out a way to extend and prolong its life, and this is just an extension of that. If I were to tell you that you have a chance at looking at the future for about the price of a cable bill uh, per month, it would probably change your perspective. Compare it to the lottery. People pay, you know, ten, twenty dollars a week for the cost of a lottery ticket, a hundred and forty-seven million to one chance. Uh, I'm paying about the same for a life insurance policy that will pay off this Alcor when I'm dead for an opportunity to do so much more than any, you know, any lottery could ever give you, an opportunity to, to peek into the future. That's priceless as far as I'm concerned. The foundations of society and religion are built on the certainty of death. And cryonics is a practice that strikes at the very core of this notion. If it works, it will trigger a fundamental change in how we define death. A definition that is continually shifting with medical breakthroughs. Fifty years ago, someone whose heart stopped was dead by those standards. Today, you can use defibrillation devices. Hearts are routinely stopped in surgery. The definition of death is changing. If you were to have the perception that dying and bringing somebody back to life is wrong, then you would eliminate all the, you know, the electrical paddles when somebody has a heart attack and bringing them back to life. You would eliminate all mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation or any type of CPR. Aubrey de Grey is a research scientist based at the University of Cambridge. His goal is to expedite the development of a cure for human aging, to beat death. Cryopreservation is simply stopping people from dying. It's keeping people alive biologically. And so I think once one understands the biology better, one can easily see that there is no moral issue here any more than there is in keeping someone on life support. If you think living a long time is a good thing, then it's probably also a good thing to live a long time with a bit of a gap in the middle. Science has already discovered ways to suspend and revive biological life forms. Today, relatively simple living structures, such as red blood and stem cells, sperm and embryos, are routinely preserved using cryobiology technology. Cryobiology is not simply putting something in a freezer and walking away, uh, such as uh, frozen meat or frozen vegetables. Uh, cryobiology is much more involved. First of all, there's been a great deal of study of the formation of ice crystals, which do damage to the cells how we can prevent this damage and uh, modify the formation of ice crystals. We do this by putting in a cryoprotective additive. At 21st Century Medicine, Chief Scientific Officer Gregory Fahey and his team of researchers are at the cutting edge of cryobiology technology. Their mission is to extend the shelf life of donor human organs, which currently only remain viable for transplant for a few hours. But by suspending an organ at extremely low temperatures, they can press biological freeze frame. Cellular decomposition that takes one second at normal body temperature will take 24 million years at liquid nitrogen temperature. As you cool to cryogenic temperatures, you can experience the sort of temperature equivalent of Einstein's theory of time dilation. Time stretches out more and more and more. His team have achieved a world first. They have cryopreserved a rabbit kidney, reversed the procedure, and successfully re-implanted it without losing the ability to sustain the life of the recipient. Much to our amazement, it actually did survive. So we actually have finally accomplished this goal that I've been pursuing since 1972 of being able to vitrify a kidney, warm it back up again, transplant it, and have the animal maintain clinical normalcy indefinitely afterwards. Cutting-edge scientific researchers like 21st Century Medicine are still struggling to successfully preserve single organs from healthy, living animals. But Alcor is attempting to achieve the same thing on something far more complicated, an entire, dead human body. For Michael and Anita Riskin, 
Their speculative decision to sign up to cryonics is fast becoming a reality. No. Anita has just weeks to live. Other people might possibly uh, criticize Anita in the sense of she's running away from death, she doesn't want to face a kind of a normal process, something that happens to everybody, there's a certain kind of biological lifespan that we've been given. And in fact, I think both Anita and I are facing the prospect of death head on, fully acknowledging it, fully understanding that this is going to happen. So really, rather than running away from it, I think we're running towards it with all the vigor and intelligence and organization we can possibly muster. With Anita's condition worsening, she visited her children and grandchildren for a final Christmas get-together. By January, her condition began to rapidly worsen. At that point, the doctor felt that it was becoming a um, terminal situation. And he actually told us to, uh, you know, kind of make our peace with this, you know, make it comfortable, and that he didn't know how much longer it would be. Michael took Anita to a hotel for a final weekend away together. So, Anita. Oh, I don't have anything on. It doesn't matter. My beautiful hair. What's the first thing you want to eat? When I come back? After 50 years of being frozen. Gosh darn. What is the first thing? Can I have a few things? Yeah. Meatballs and spaghetti. Uh -huh. Meatballs and spaghetti, okay. By February, Anita became housebound. She received round-the-clock nursing care with Michael by her side. During the last two weeks, actually, her main concern was being comfortable, seeing her family, the grandchildren. Every time she saw our granddaughter, she would perk up and give her a great big smile. Mostly, um, what we um, talked about was uh, kind of muted in terms of uh, expressions of love, expressions of the future, and that we hoped we would see each other again in the future. As Anita faced her final days, Michael notified Alcor. This allowed them time to prepare for the initial stabilization procedure on her death, before taking her to Arizona to complete the process. The sooner we can initiate our treatment, the better the cryoprotection and ultimately the preservation as a whole will be. The team have adapted several vans into ambulances to help patients reach headquarters as quickly as possible. We're currently inside Alcor's transport vehicle. This is a vehicle we take out to a patient's bedside when they're not here and we can do the entire stabilization procedure inside this vehicle. As soon as a patient dies, the aim is to stop cellular decomposition caused by oxygen deprivation. Crucially, brain cells are the first to die. Once they're pronounced legally dead, we place the patient in here where there's a cooling blanket on the bottom. We cover them in ice. The most important thing that you can do to prevent damage in someone in this condition is to cool. For every 10 degrees Celsius drop in temperature, there's a 50% reduction in metabolic demand, which means it takes twice as long for the damage to occur. And so our, our purpose with this system is to actually get the temperature down to just above zero. A mechanical chest compressor is used to temporarily restore circulation before injecting a cocktail of medications to stop the blood clotting. The patient's blood is then washed out and replaced with a temporary protective fluid. Trained volunteer Alcor members run the stabilization units. Many have little or no medical background. Among them a friend of Anita Riskins, special effects designer Regina Pancake. Been on about seven or eight of these suspensions over a ten-year period, I guess, at this point. I can get called at 3 in the morning, go racing out to whatever hospital they tell me to. Instant response, I'd be the first responder to the situation.